Hello, welcome to day 23 of Vlogmas. So today's handmade garment is a top. This is the Coco Top by Tilly and the Buttons and it is in a lovely double knit jersey. Now I did make some modifications to this one in that the normal neckline for the Coco Top is just folded over and then you top stitch it down but I actually drafted a neckline for this one just because I really like the finish of a proper neckline rather than just turning it in. Um, so I've done that. I've also used a smaller size at the shoulders compared to the hips um, just because that fits me better and I know that from Tilly and the Buttons patterns I've done in the past um, that works better for me. I think I'm about a size six at the shoulders in terms of Tilly and the Buttons sizes and maybe a size 10 at the hip I think so there's quite a difference there um, but it fits really nicely. I like how I've done the stripes in an opposite direction on the cuffs and the neckline on this one and it's just another lovely cozy top. I'll give you a bit of a twirl. <laughs> so today's shawl is the right around the corner shawl. This is a lovely shaped shawl and it's by Elisa Haynes and the, this particular one I've done in two of my colourways. It is You Can't Hurry Love in the pink and then here comes the rain again in the grey and this centre section you stripe those two different colours which I think is lovely. You use two skeins and I like to wear it like this. Now I saw pictures of it on somebody first and I thought wow that shawl I just love the way it looks when it's on. So you've got these two bold pieces at the front um, and then the bits that hang down the side and then you've obviously optional optional of the tassels I've just done some small tassels on these ones but I do have another version where I've done larger tassels and I just think it looks a lovely balanced shape um, so it's definitely one I recommend especially for a beginner knitter as well you only need two skeins of yarn and it's quite simple knitting um, so definitely one I'd recommend um, for all abilities really so I've got quite a few little bits and bobs jobs to do today um, but I want to finish Jensen's stocking ready for Christmas. So I've cut out my outside fabrics um, and I've also cut out some wadding for the two outside fabrics as well which are these two and the wadding is on the back. I'm going to put a few pins on here before I start doing some quilting and I've also prepared two panels for the lining as well which are assembled using the same stripped piecing as I showed you yesterday um, so first of all I'm going to pop some pins in here and do a little bit of quilting before I start doing the assembly so I've decided to do some diagonal red quilting lines all over my stocking. What I'm going to do is I found the 45 degree angle, put that along this seam line and I'm going to put some masking tape along the line there which is 45 degrees from this line and then that will be my first line to quilt. It's, I think it's easier to start from the middle and then I can work my lines out from that line because this will be sort of the longest line that I can fit in. Um, so I'm going to put some masking tape on there now. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. Now I could use masking tape across the whole thing but what I'm going to do is use there's a guide on my on my sewing machine that I can attach to the foot and I can just follow the initial quilting line that I'm going to do first. So I've got the red thread set up in my sewing machine and I'm using this guide here um, and I've set it to one inch from the stitch line here so that I can just follow along uh, the initial stitch line that I'm going to make. Um, so that's all ready to go. I better get started. We can hang out on the beach without freezing. Yeah, isn't that amazing? In I've quilted both panels and now 
because I when I trimmed my wadding I left a little bit of a gap just to make sure that there was plenty I'm going to go around and trim each of these so that um, when I'm actually sewing them together it's easier to get a nice neat seam allowance so I'm just getting some scissors and cutting that around nice and neatly Christmas times. We'll be chilling in so now I've literally got my two top panels, outside panels with the wadding on um, that have all been quilted, ready to assemble and my two lining pieces ready to assemble but uh, the only thing that I need to make before I start assembling these is a, uh, is a loop holder so, so I cut a strip of one of the three inch strips um, that was left over from um, the previous section where I cut out um, the stocking from the piece like this and I just unpicked a section out of this and this piece happens to be about nine and a half inches so I thought that would be the right distance for the hanging loop so I just basically I got the piece of fabric and I thought well that's plenty long enough for the hanging loop so nine and a half inches and then the three inch strip I took it to the ironing board and I pressed it in half then I folded the center I folded the pieces to the center press that and then pressed it again now instead of using interfacing I like to do this because there's four layers of fabric there which is plenty strong enough for a handle um, but you don't get that stiffness of interfacing um, if you did use woven interfacing it would have a similar effect but I thought because I've got the three inch strips already three inch folded into four is about uh, three quarters of an inch thick um, for your tab so I think that's perfect what I'm going to do is just stitch along both sides of this strip to make sure that it's completely enclosed and also I like to do it on the other side because it makes like an even finish so I'm going to do that and then we're going to start assembling Having a good, good time. So this is one of the quilted panels for the outside of my stocking. This one I thought would be the back because I'm going to have it sort of facing to the left. I don't know why. <laughs> it probably doesn't make much difference. Um, but this one is what I'm going to put my handle on so that the handle sort of sits to the back of the stocking. Now I'm going to get my lining for this piece which is basically the opposite that I've also pieced and I'm just going to pin it to the outside piece and stitch across the top with that handle tab sandwich between with both ends um, into the seam so I'm just going to stitch across the top of there I'm going to do the same with the other piece but obviously with no tab handle in there what I'm also going to do with the one with the little tab handle, I'm going to stitch over that tab handle a few times just to make sure that it's really secure. So I'll stitch over it and then just go backwards and forwards and that should secure it nicely. I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance now um, as well as the piecing to join the stocking together as well. So quarter inch seam allowance um, all the time. I have just remembered that I'd bought some rick rack, or not rick rack, but some pom pom um, trim to put on my stocking. So I've just pinned it on, even though the actual lining is stitched in to the top end. I'm just going to pin that in there and give it a zigzag stitch over the top. And I've got that pinned in and this one pinned in for the one with a tab in as well. So I'm going to just quickly zigzag stitch over that um, before I start my assembly. So I've got my two right sides here with my pom-pom trim attached. This pom-pom trim is a bit of a nightmare because there was a little bit of a stretch to it. So I would suggest you hand tack it in place before you start zigzagging anything on the top, if it's anything like my trim anyway. So I've got my lining attached on both sides and what I'm going to do is sandwich these pieces of fabric together right side to right side and I'm going to stitch all the way around this side of the stocking and I'm going to do all the way around here but I'm going to leave a gap 
at the foot so I can turn the whole thing inside out. So I'll actually start here, stitch all the way around, all the way around the foot, all the way back to about here and then I'll be able to turn the whole thing through the foot. I am going to pin this to the inside so that I don't get it caught in the side seam and I'm actually going to put some little applique pins in these pom-poms near the edges of the seams so they don't go get caught in the seams as well. Um, so I'm going to sandwich those together now. I've now pinned it together ready to stitch and like I said I'm going to stitch all the way around here, all the way around the back and stop here so that I've got this gap at the back and I'm going to machine stitch that shut but if you are going to have it so that it is double sided if you hand stitch that bit then it'll look good on both sides obviously you won't have the quilted side out if you do have the lining outwards um, but I better get on with stitching that what I've done here as well is I've nested my seams on the two sides so that I'm trying to match up those stripes um, on the door. So I'm now stitched all the way around. I'm going to put my hand in through the lining. I nearly forgot to stop stitching so it's a little bit closer the gap <laughs> than I originally intended. So I'm put my hand in the gap and pull that stocking through. And then I'm going to use my hand to smooth out the seams on the stocking. Then I can take these little pins out that I've put to stop the pom-poms from escaping and getting in the seam allowance. So I, what I'll do is once I've um, stitched the inside closed and poked it in, I'll give it a nice press as well. I'm just tucking in the seam allowance. I'm going to just pin that closed and take it over to the sewing machine and top stitch it an eighth of an inch from the edge so that you can't see um, the stitch line and then um, like I said before though if you are going to have it reversible I do this by hand using a ladder stitch and then we can poke the line in inside the main stocking right so now we are stitched we need to poke it inside right so there we go Let's just give it a quick press. So there we go, we have a finished stocking. I'm so pleased we finished this today. I say we, because <laughs> you've been helping me. <laughs> um, it's a nice usable stocking, relatively large for like an actual stocking shape one. I am going to make him like a giant pillowcase size um, bag that's Christmassy print as well. Um, but this one I thought it'd be nice to have a stocking shape. Um, but there we go. The Enormous Crocodile Finger Puppet Book. Are you ready, Jensen? One enormous crocodile, hungry and on the hunt for something to eat. What's he gonna eat? Two coconuts hanging on a tree, munch, crunch. The Enormous Crocodile eats them up. Munch, 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 munch. Crocodile is hungrier than ever. Watch out, or he might eat you. That was good, wasn't it? And then the last page. We're on our way home. Go, go, go. Goodbye, moon. Touch the shimmering earth. Where shall we go next? Where do you want to go next? You want to go to bed? Okay, let's go to bed, shall we? Well, Adam... As yes. you've already put the kettle on, I think you should be getting your advent calendar chocolates out. Oh, it would be nice. Wouldn't yeah, it? get on with it then. What day is it? <laughs> it is Christmas Eve Eve. Christmas Eve Eve? Yes. Is that the 23rd? By it's the chance? 23rd, that one. So today's song is Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas by Frank Sinatra. Is there any one in there? I think Mum must have nicked one of your chocolates. You know Someone what she's else. like. There's going to be an inquisition tomorrow. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> we'll find out. Yes. So we are on day 23 of the Lego Advent Calendar. Can you believe it? There's only two left. I know. What are we going to do? I know. You'll be really upset, won't you? <laughs> are you ready? Yeah, we're ready. 
Oh, ho, ho, ho. it's a Christmas tree. Oh, lovely. And that's going to fit in the number 23 spot in the corner. Lovely. We have a finished Christmas tree. Oh. So day 24, it looks like there's like a spinner, what do you call it, to do, to work out how many places you need to move. But do you think you need to build that or is it already made? Mm -hmm. We will see. So today's socks, I am wearing my candy cane sock pattern design in the Jingle Bell Rock colourway and Adam is wearing some West Yorkshire spinners um, that I knitted up for him as well, just in a simple top-down sock. Wiggle your toes, Adam! <laughs> Santa's gonna come and join us in this song. Oh, yeah. 